Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEd T630 workstations, and specifically we're going to go over the CPUs and RAM inside. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEd T630 workstation. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Uh, first off, let's talk about the chassis. This is a 5U chassis, which means that it can be uh, actually put into a rack and you can have rails and you can put it in a rack similar to the racks behind us and it would take up five spaces. Or you can use this as basically a, de a desktop or workstation. It'll stand upright, uh, which to me kind of makes it like the ultimate um, office server in the sense of if you're in an office space and you don't have space for a rack, this is just a great solution. Uh, you can really kind of just throw it into the corner and get all the power of a server and not really need a rack. So uh, to me, this is um, a great solution for um, any kind of a, a space or an office space that doesn't have doesn't have a rack. Um, it's also great if you want to use this at home for a gaming server or you just want to you know play around at your house and use this as a home lab server. I mean, this is a great system to play around with. So, uh, well, let's get rolling. Um, as far as the chassis is concerned, there are uh, four different styles for the hard drives. You can get what this is, which is an eight bay large form factor with the drives cabled in, or you can get an 18 bay large form factor and the drives are hot swap or you can get a 16 bay small form factor drives are also hot swap or a 32 bay um, small form factor and also the drives are hot swap so there's a number of different types of chassis um, if you're putting ssds in it uh, the 32 bay is probably the best option if you're wanting to use this for storage uh, to me i think the 18 bay large form factor 3.5 inch is really the best option because you can put a ton of uh, larger drives in there and um, you know save on the price per gigabyte compared to the 2.5 inch versus 3.5 inch so uh, as far as the cpus are concerned uh, there are two cpus inside it's an lga 2011-3 socket, which means you can use Intel Xeon E5 2600 V3 or V4 series. People ask us all the time, hey, what CPUs do you recommend? And really, honestly, there's a lot of good CPUs right now for the V3s and V4s. The prices have come way down. Uh, you can get something like uh, on the low end, uh, like an E5 2620 V3, uh, which is a hex core. And you can put two of them in and get you know, 12 cores for really cheap. Um, personally, I like something a little bit more robust, something like a E5 uh, 2670 V2, uh, I'm sorry, V3, uh, or something like a E5 uh, 2690 V3. Uh, those are really, really good price points. Um, if you want something more high end, uh, you can go something like E5 2695 V4, E5 2699 V5. I mean, you can get some really beefy processors for this machine, uh, but just, you know, everyday users, you want a good, good price good price point. Uh, I check out like the E5 26, 60, 70 type of uh, V3, V4s and you'll get a, a generally good price point. So uh, as far as the RAM is concerned, uh, it takes DDR4 memory. There are 24 DIMM slots inside. If you're familiar with the R630, then you're in great shape because the T630 is realistically the exact same for CPUs and RAM. Uh, as far as the uh, speeds, you can use uh, uh, 2133, 2400, 2666. Now I will note that 2666 will clock back down to 2400. So there's no real advantage. Uh, if you have 2666 laying around uh, and you just want to pop it in, yes, it will work. If you're buying right now, I'd recommend the 2400 speed. Uh, to me, that is the uh, the best overall value uh, and it's the fastest speed for this machine. So that's the direction I would go. Uh, as far as the different sizes, you can use 4 gig, you can use an 8 gig, you can use a 16 gig, you can use a 32 gig, or all the way up to 64 gig, but you can only use 64 gig with one type of memory, which brings us to what type of RAM can I use with the T630? You can use ECC registered, also known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduce, also known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out at 768 gigabytes using 2432 gigs. With uh, our, I'm sorry, LR DIMMs, you can actually double the scalability and you can put in 1.5 terabytes using 2464 gigabytes, which is the advantage. You can use 64 gigs with LR DIMMs and you can only use 32 gigs with R DIMMs. So there is a distinct advantage as far as the overall scalability. So people say, hey, you know, I'm only looking to put in, you know, 32 gigs right now and they might not be completely maxing out like 12 32 gigs or, you know, even 6 32 gigs. Um, I would recommend going ahead and putting in the LR DIMMs 
if you think you are going to be upgrading again in the future because you cannot mix LR dims with R dims. So as far as just overall scalability uh, and wanting to upgrade down the line, LR dims might be the, the better way to go. So it just kind of depends on what you're doing, okay? All right, now that we know a little bit more about the, uh, the CPUs and the RAM and the different chassis styles, I want to actually open it up. Um, I want to show you the, just the different channels in there, but before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. First things first, make sure it's set to unlock. Pop the tab open, pretty much like really any system you've been in before. All right, now that we are in, uh, you will notice that there is an air baffle that is on top of uh, both the CPUs and the uh, all the dim slots. So we're gonna have to remove the uh, the air baffle. And before we do, you don't have to remove this, but personally, I like to remove this because uh, it kind of sometimes just gets in the way a little bit of the. And this is how you remove it. I apologize. You just gotta squeeze these in and pop it up. It kind of gets in the way sometimes when I'm lifting out the air baffle and the air baffle is bigger. It's uh, it's it's actually plugged into the board. You got the intrusion sensor right here. Uh, you got the fans in it. Uh, you just need to make sure you lift it straight up and, and just be careful. So it's one of those things that I kind of stress the point. It's, it's honestly, it's really not that hard, but um, I just want to make sure uh, that everyone does it safely. And one thing also that's really nice about the, uh, the the air baffle before we pull it out, it actually labels this is CPU one, this is CPU two. Uh, down here, it might be hard to see. Um, and up here, you might be able to see a little bit better, but it even has all the dim slots labeled. Uh, it's labeled on the board as well. And honestly, it's even labeled over here and I'll just bring this back in uh, it's labeled over here uh, inside the the lid itself so uh, there's three different places where Dell has made it nice and convenient and easy uh, for you to recognize where to put the modules in so anyhow we're gonna lift this up oh actually you know what I forgot you need to push this blue clip over here okay so this is the way that you're gonna open it you're gonna push this clip and you're gonna lift it straight up okay now one of the things I wanted to note is you have a connector right here for the intrusion sensor, which is plugged in uh, to the board, and that's where you just need to be uh, safe and just make sure you lift it straight up, okay? All right, well, now that we are in, you will notice there are two CPUs, CPU one and CPU two. CPU one controls the 12 dim slots up here, and CPU two controls the 12 dim slots back here. So if you only had one CPU in, none of the 12 dim slots back here would work. So I just wanted to point that out, uh, make sure you knew that in advance. Uh, realistically, if you're using this machine, you should have two CPUs, uh, but just in case, I uh, wanted to point that out, you can't use any of the dim slots without the second CPU installed, okay? Now let's go over the channels themselves, okay? So with CPU one, there are 12 dim slots and there are four memory channels, which means each memory channel has three dims per channel. And this is color coded and important to note. Um, if you're maxing it out, it's not as important, but this is really more for everybody else. You, you might not be maxing this out and putting in uh, you know, 768 or 1.5 terabytes of RAM, you might only be putting in, you know, 64 gigs, or you might only be putting in 96 gigs, or, you know, 128, and that's perfectly fine. And if you're doing that, you want to still make sure you get the, the best performance possible. And that's where you need to understand the channels, okay? So there, the channels are color coded. The start of each channel is the white dim slot. So this is A1. This next slot right here that's white is A2, okay? So this first channel, the second channel. Come over here, you have A3, that's the third channel, and A4. Now come back and you have A5, and that's gonna be the second slot in the first channel. And then you have A6, the second slot in the second channel, and so on and so forth. So then A7, A8, and then you come back around, a9, A10, A11, A12, okay? And when you come over here, it actually flip-flops since this is the first uh, dim in the first channel. This over here is B1, B2, B3, B4, 
Okay, so that's how it works on the back side, then it'll progress the exact same way, uh, but that is how you would uh, follow the channels as far as loading it. So what, what's important about that, and when people you know, ask us why we stress the point, when you're installing your modules and you're not maxing it out, you wanna make sure you have an even distribution across all of your memory channels. You don't wanna overload two, three, four channels and then have several other channels that just aren't working at all for you. You want every one of your channels working evenly hard um, and that'll boost your overall performance, okay? So I'll show you what I mean by that when we start to install these. So uh, before we do, um, I wanted to show you a couple of tricks. So the first thing I like to note is if you look at this dim right here, there is a notch in the middle. This notch is known as a key. Now that key is important because it's not perfectly centered, so you need to make sure you line up your module properly because if you don't, you could potentially damage the module or you could damage the dim slot itself. Neither of those are a solution that you want to do. So you just need to make sure you line it up properly and we're going to go ahead and put this one in A1. And another thing that I actually like to do, I like to make sure all of my tabs are open before I go to install my modules uh, because I don't, you know, I like to, like safety is most important to me. Uh, I don't want to have any issues with the machine. I don't want to have any issues with the parts. Um, I want everything to go flawlessly. So I just do a couple of extra little steps um, that are just to protect the parts and to protect the machine, okay? All right, so now that I've uh, put the module in, you'll notice it's not actually in and it's not properly installed. We hear all the time people who would tell us that they have a, you know, a dim failure uh, or they have an issue. And really what it is nine times out of 10 is that the module is not properly seated. Uh, so what you need to make sure is you hear these two clicks. So those two clicks let you know that you have fully inserted the module and that um, there is a good solid connection between the dim and the dim slot. And you will notice, now I've installed it in the first two uh, channels, the start of the first two channels, A1, A2, you'll notice that the uh, the black and the green slots here are sticking out further than the white slots. And again, that's how you know uh, that a module is properly seated because you have to make sure that you have uh, a good firm connection, okay? So now over here, the module flip-flops as, as far as the, the key is concerned. So we need to, again, make sure we line it up properly. This is very important. And then just hear the click, click, okay? And you know that you're, you're doing good and you're getting a nice solid connection and everything is going smoothly, okay? So now what I have done here is there are four channels per, uh, per CPU as we discussed. I have put uh, four modules in at the start of each channel. And the importance of that, again, is to boost your overall performance. So now if I were to, let's say I was only installing four DIMMs, this is how we do it. If I were installing eight, guess where I'm gonna put them? The four white slots back here, and that is using all eight channels, the start of each eight, uh, each one of the eight channels, okay? And again, it's just all about performance. Um, now what I'm gonna do is max it out, but this is for everyone that isn't maxing it out. Now let's just say you were putting in 16, and you're wondering, well, what do I do after those first eight? You're gonna use the eight blacks, leaving the green slot empty. So it would be all of the black slots, okay? Um, and then uh, after that, you would then just fill up all the greens. And that's why you'll notice on our website, the way that we sell it, we sell them in packs of eight, packs of 16, and packs of 24. And people wonder why, and well, it's because we want you to have a nice, even distribution across all your channels. That's the best way to do it and to have the best overall performance. So I'm gonna go ahead and click fast forward, fill this up, and be right back. All right, now we got 1.5 terabytes in our T630. I mean, this thing is going to be uh, performing at, it, at its peak. It's pretty awesome. I'm really excited at the overall upgrade here. Um, and if you're at home uh, or you're at, using this at your office um, and you're wondering, man, you know, I'm, I'm not a real tech. I'm not really sure if I can you know, do this upgrade. Honestly, uh, upgrading RAM is one of the easiest things to do um, on a, a upgrade side for, for computers and servers as a whole. Uh, it's a simple process. Videos like this on YouTube will make it really easy for you to do. So if you're wondering if you can do it, yes, you can. Uh, it's really easy. Uh, and you can also contact us and we can help you. Um, and if you're looking to upgrade your system, do contact us. We'd love to, qu to quote you. Uh, we have everything under the sun for this machine, 8 gigs, 16 gigs, 32 gigs, 64 gigs. Uh, and we'd love to be able to, to help you upgrade your machine. So contact us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales 
at cloudninjas.com. And hey, if you made it this far, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and put this back together. Um, so we're going to put the air baffle back in. So we just want to line everything up properly. And keep in mind there is uh, the plug that we discussed earlier. So you just want to make sure that uh, everything lines up smoothly. There we go. I had it off just a little bit. Okay. And once everything gets lined up properly, you're just going to drop it in. You're going to hear that click back here. And then we're going to put this back in. And I kind of went fast on this in the beginning, but there's just three holes right here. And two of them will go into the rivets that are sticking out. And then it'll just pop in and you'll hear that click into place. Okay. Put the top back on. Call it a day. Appreciate you stopping by. Take care.